Hey guys, and welcome back. Let's get right into it. What really happens to your prostate if you masturbate every day? It's a question a lot of men think about, but rarely ask out loud. For many of us, the prostate is this mysterious gland that we don't pay attention to until it starts causing problems. We hear stories, we get worried, and often we just ignore the possible warning signs, hoping they'll go away. And let's be honest. It can be a tough subject to talk about even with a doctor. There's a lot of shame and wrong information out there, but ignoring your health because you're embarrassed is one of the worst things you can do for your quality of life. So today, we're going to break that silence. In this video, we're going to look at the real science behind how often you ejaculate and prostate health. We'll uncover the three major changes your prostate goes through after age 40, and most importantly, I'm going to give you a clear, simple action plan with steps you can start taking today to take control of your prostate health for the long run. And stick around because one of the tips I'm sharing involves a common food you probably already have in your kitchen, and it's a powerhouse for prostate health. First things first, what even is the prostate? Think of it as a small walnut-sized gland. It sits right below the bladder and wraps around the urethra, which is the tube that carries urine out of the body. Its main job is to make the fluid that feeds and carries sperm, making it a crucial part of the male reproductive system. For most of a man's younger life, it does its job quietly in the background. But here's the key thing to understand. As we get older, especially after 40, the prostate naturally tends to grow. This is a normal part of aging for most men. When it does grow, it can start to squeeze the urethra, which leads to some of those classic annoying symptoms many men start to notice. Things like having trouble starting to urinate or a weak stream, waking up multiple times during the night to go to the bathroom, and that frustrating feeling that your bladder is never completely empty no matter how hard you try. If any of this sounds familiar, you're not alone. So, let's get to the heart of it. The question from the title, Is frequent ejaculation, whether from masturbation or with a partner, good or bad for your prostate? The science on this is actually pretty interesting. A major study published in the journal European Urology, which followed thousands of men for nearly two decades, found a very strong link. Men who ejaculated more frequently, specifically around 21 or more times per month, had a much lower risk of developing prostate cancer compared to men who ejaculated only four to seven times per month. The leading theory behind this is something called the prostate flushing idea. The idea is that with each ejaculation, the prostate gets flushed out. This process helps clear out old cells and possibly harmful substances that might otherwise build up in the gland and cause inflammation or the development of abnormal cells. It's like cleaning out the pipes regularly to prevent buildup. But here is the critical part, and I really want you to hear this. Frequent ejaculation is not a magic cure. It is just one piece of a much larger health puzzle. You cannot eat poorly avoid exercise, and skip your doctor's appointments, thinking that masturbation alone will protect you. It's a helpful factor, but it has to be part of a complete healthy lifestyle. So, beyond ejaculation, what is actually happening inside your body? Let's talk about the three major changes your prostate goes through after 40. First is growth and fluid buildup. As I mentioned, the prostate naturally grows with age, a condition known as benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH. This isn't cancer, but it's what causes most of the urinary symptoms. As the gland gets bigger, it can also become less efficient at getting rid of its fluids, leading to buildup. This can create a constant feeling of pressure or discomfort and can lead to ongoing low-level inflammation which is a key driver of many health problems. The second major change is related to hormone shifts. As men age, testosterone levels naturally begin to drop. 
At the same time, the body converts some of that testosterone into a much more powerful hormone called dihydrotestosterone or DHT. High levels of DHT are known to make the prostate cells multiply, which directly contributes to its growth. This hormone imbalance is a major factor in prostate changes. And the third major change is an increased risk of abnormal cells. Think of it like this. Every day, your body is replacing old cells with new ones. Over decades with billions of cell divisions, there's a higher chance that a mistake can happen, leading to the growth of abnormal cells. The combination of inflammation, hormone changes, and the simple factor of age means the risk of developing conditions like prostate cancer increases. This is exactly why being proactive and getting screened is not just a good idea, it's essential. Okay, so now that you understand what's happening, let's talk about what you can do about it. Here is your four pillar action plan for a healthy prostate. Pillar number one, annual medical checkups. This is non-negotiable. Starting around age 40, or whatever age your doctor recommends based on your family history, you need to be seeing a urologist for an annual checkup. This includes two key things. The PSA blood test, which measures a protein in your blood, and the digital rectal exam, or DRE. I know the DRE is the one everyone fears, but let's be men about this. It's a 15-second procedure that can save your life. It does not define your masculinity. Your health is what matters, and early detection is the single most important factor in successfully treating prostate cancer. Pillar number two, an anti-inflammatory diet. You have to give your body the right fuel. This means reducing or avoiding foods that cause inflammation, like red meat, processed foods, fried foods, and too much sugar. Instead, you want to load up on vegetables, fruits, and healthy fats found in things like avocado, nuts, and olive oil. And now for that secret weapon I promised you, tomatoes. Tomatoes are packed with an antioxidant called lycopene, which has been shown in many studies to be incredibly protective for the prostate. And a pro tip, lycopene is better absorbed by the body when it's cooked. So things like tomato sauce, tomato paste, and even ketchup can be great for your prostate health. Pillar number three, consistent physical activity. You don't need to become a marathon runner, but you do need to move your body consistently. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate activity, like brisk walking most days of the week. Strength training is also fantastic for regulating hormones, and there's a specific exercise you should know about, Kegels. Kegel exercises strengthen your pelvic floor muscles, which helps support the bladder and prostate, improving urinary control. They're simple to do and you can do them anywhere. And pillar number four, hydration. This is simple, but absolutely crucial. Drinking enough water throughout the day helps dilute your urine, keeps your urinary system functioning smoothly, and helps flush out toxins. Aim for around two to three liters per day. It's a small habit with a huge impact. So to wrap this all up, caring for your prostate isn't something to put off. It's an essential part of taking charge of your health as a man, ensuring you have a high quality of life for decades to come. Breaking the silence and getting informed is the most powerful first step. Your health is your responsibility and taking action is the most powerful thing you can do. If this video helped you, please do me a favor and hit that like button and share it with a friend or a family member who needs to hear this message. And be sure to subscribe for more no-nonsense health advice just like this. And for today's comment, I want to hear from you. What is one healthy habit you're going to start this week to protect your prostate? Let's support each other in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.